I'm Shantae and you're watching my show, Anything Goes. Today's guest star is the talented actress, Sean Clifford. You know and love her from TV shows like Fleabag, Quiz and Two Weeks to Live. Listen along as we discuss all things uncertainty, friendship and channeling creativity. Today, today, we are here with the incredible actress, Sean Clifford. What's happening? So thrilled to be here. <laughs> So I'm Michelle. I'm literally so happy you're here. Just thank you for sharing your gifts with the world. We really don't deserve you. That's how great don't you really are. Don't really embarrass me. Start <laughs> blushing. So how are you? How are things? And how have you been coping during this pandemic? The biggest challenge for me has been sort of dealing with the uncertainty of everything. But I feel like that can only be a good thing that we sort of start getting comfortable yeah. with that. I'm a real like control freak it's the Aries energy it's the Aries energy <laughs> I mean I feel like everyone kind of is to some extent I think that's yeah. totally human to to um, want to do that but my whole philosophy throughout this entire madness has been to soften the grip and mm. to just allow and surrender to to what is and and let's see you know where we are at the end of it and really examine what the the positives that we really could should and could take with us yeah, I think the biggest challenge has been a, a mental one, for yeah. sure. But you are obviously very big into, not mindfulness, but self-inquiry. I yeah. That, right? So yeah. where, like, what is that practice and what does that mean to you? Well, well, I also refer to it as like conscious living. Yeah. Which, because I think mindfulness, for me, I think it's, we actually need to get out of our heads and into our bodies because it's about the feeling space for me. So mm. that's what we, like, what's really supported me is becoming much more conscious of that. And I always describe it as almost like turning up the volume on your intuition, mm. but in every aspect of your life. Obviously, like there are some areas of my life where it's at a 10 and there are some where it's a two. And um, yeah, I think self-inquiry is a more um, empowering word than like self-improvement, because that tells you yeah. you're not good enough as you are, which I think everyone is. It feels a bit like a capitalist scam, you know? <laughs> When I think of a lot of the, the mindfulness industry and the self-improvement mm. industry, yeah. it's all about priming you and prepping you to be better equipped in the workforce or better equipped to contribute to the economy, yeah. as opposed to getting to know yourself as an individual and figuring out the ways in which you can live a, a happier, more fulfilled life outside of how productive you are, do you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. I think that industry has been commodified massively in the last sort of five to 10 years you're absolutely right. It's almost in the same way that like advertising yeah. seeks to undermine you in order to, to um, sell you the thing that you need to make yourself better. I think there's there's been a sort of danger around uh, sort of spiritual and, and self-help yeah. world that that's happened. I was coming off the back of like one of the busiest periods of my life. So actually, I, I didn't have much left in the tank. And like, we have to get into it because you have just been on our screens, Stop. serving, <laughs> flea bag, quiz, two weeks to live. Like you have been doing the damn thing, but this has all kind of come like in a short period of time. And I'm wondering before everything kicked off, did you anticipate that this would be happening? What sort of headspace were you in? No, I feel like really lucky because I filmed so much last year that I have got like stuff coming out throughout this year. It's very, yeah. it's it's very, it's, it's been quite uh, weird and also a bit of a gift Yeah. because I've been able to like still c carry on with work essentially from home because it was a lot of press engagements and stuff yeah. like that. Fleabag is obviously sort of the seed of all of uh, like the fruits of those opportunities. So yeah. that has changed my life astronomically. I mean, yeah. like beyond, um, I'm not able to articulate it really. Obviously like quiz is, it was just an amazing job. Like when that landed that on my doorstep, sick. I couldn't even believe I was being asked to be involved in it. Like it just felt so huge and beyond me. And then two weeks to live, like working with Maisie, who mm. I absolutely love. Yeah, and they're such different yeah. things. Range, sis. You yeah. have range. Oh, That's it. what the girls call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's been it's been like a ride. It's been a wild ride. I think part of being an actor is this constant neurosis <laughs> and and fear of of what comes next yeah I, d I definitely would love to do more producing on the right thing and i'm writing as well and i've oh, i've yes. done that for a long time i'm following where the flow is right now yes yeah. that's definitely definitely with acting so i have like 
lovely people that I'm working with. Phoebe Wallabridge is someone who pushes me so much and is constantly like, yeah, what have you done today? That's so, so good, like an accountability partner. Yeah, exactly. You need to like find your champions. Yeah. That's, you know, that's what I think of her as, is my greatest champion. Yeah. And you've got to find those people that invigorate and inspire you and that back you. Mm. You know, that's also been life changing for me is finding your collaborators, the people that will get you to where you want to go yeah. and uh, believe in you in, in places and spaces where you don't believe in yourself maybe as much. Yeah. I mean, that was such a huge thing for me with Fleabag that Phoebe really believed in me as an actor, definitely more than I than I did myself at that stage in my career. It's actually given me back a lot of confidence in, in lots of things, not just my acting, but also my writing, mm. you know. Why do you it. think you ever lost confidence? I think because any industry kind of wants to um, like pigeonhole you and box you. Mm. Um, I don't think that's just specific to what I do. I think that's what anyone does. I think we, labels make people feel safe, but actually I think they restrain us, actually. Yeah, the more creative you can allow yourself to be in terms of your thinking, not necessarily in terms of your vocation, um, the more fulfilled your yeah. life will be. And even like just going back to talking about the relationship between you and Phoebe, mm. I really love it because I feel like women in the media are often like we're often pitted against each other and yeah. fr our friendships are, are used as content. Oh yeah, that's amazing you said that. They, they <laughs> tried to with a BAFTA because of course we were in the, oh, same, yeah, the same category. category. There was no question yeah. we were both just like backing the other. Exactly. And, and um, a win for one is always a win for the other yeah. because of all the stuff that and you've I done And I can't together. tell you the, the joy that she, she had for me winning she was happier than anyone oh, she was that. the happiest she was like no this is this is how the flea bag journey ends like yeah makes me emotional but it was just like and we spent that on our own it was just us like saying goodbye to that to oh. that show so yeah no it's really it's really special we, we have known each other for such a long time now how did you meet in drama school drama school yeah 17 you know, years I ago question, I answered it myself yeah yeah <laughs> and did you just know from the moment that you were just going to be mates for well life. like initially so there's like this three-day initiation period <laughs> and um and we're both from Ealing we're both mm. from West London and but we're both from very different backgrounds so I think we we're a little wary of each other initially yeah and I can't remember if we're in the same groups or not in those first three days but uh no on the on the third day they had there was this kind of party we happened to leave at the same time I guess and we were both stood on the platform at Good Street um, we're like, oh God. And of course, you know that feeling yeah, when you're yeah. getting on a tube and you know it's a 45 minute journey. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh God. Yeah. Uh, but by the end of that, that journey, then yes, I, I, I knew I had a, like a, a, firm, a firm friend for sure. I had an ally in that. I love that. In that environment, yeah. As an actor, you, you meet new people all the time. Like, on a, on a set, you meet like a hundred new people. Like yeah. it's amazing. And that's every, you know, few months or, you know, even in a theatre job or wherever. Like there's just, there are new fresh faces all the time. Yeah, I love connecting with people, but I think now as I've got older and definitely with how my life has changed in the last couple of years, like I'm really particular. And also what I was saying about, you know, surrounding yourself with the people that, that you love and that love you. Um, it's so important. So I'm really I'm much more specific now about yeah. like who who I make those connections with or sustain those connections with, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that just comes with time as you get to know yourself better? You know yeah. what you want in the people around you. Yeah, definitely. And and of course, a human can always surprise you. Yeah, that's true. Actually. Um, yeah. No, I do. I love meeting new people. <laughs> I love that. You have played some really incredible women across all of your roles. And it would be interesting to know where those kind of inspirations come from. I'll always approach every character differently. With some characters, they immediately leap off the page. Mm. I mean, usually, to be honest, they're the jobs that I go for because then the writing is doing so much of the work for you. I yeah. mean, Fleabag, like that character was 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 fully formed yeah. the second it left Phoebe's pen. Like that's, the, the Claire was, Claire was Claire. There yeah. was a, it was so obvious to me how to play that character, which is why Phoebe and I constantly have this back and forth about, like, I give her all the credit and she throws it back to me because I'm like, 
no, no, it was on the page. Mm. I didn't have to do anything. Because for me, I used to be so intellectual about it, or I used to intellectualize and overthink and be really in my head about characters and my scripts would be covered in notes and um, and beats and breaking it all down. And, and I have totally binned that. Like, that's, that's gone. I don't do mm. that now at all. Softening the grip. Soften the grip. I realise it's much more about embodying and a feeling. I don't think I can play a character until I can feel them in my body. Mm. So it really is about, it's about feeling, it's about an energy. And that's why the text can give you so much because you can feel their rhythm and when you can feel that it's like their heartbeat and then mm. you and then you can hold space for them in your body and you can feed it and then it's really clear how you know the rest will just follow and that's why I always want a different feeling yeah yeah and that's why I want to play as many different humans as I can yeah because then you get to stretch a different muscle it's yeah really, it's really exciting and that and I really think it cultivates your own empathy around that person's values whether you share them or not that we all have these tells yeah we all have these little things that that give our our true selves away no matter how many masks we try to put on which is why i've tried to do away with as many as i can but it's it's hard because of the world we live in but yeah. i do the more uh sort of self-inquiry that i do the more sort of uh i think i evolve the more i want to get closer to that that true version of myself and then and that's what I share with the world I love that and if you could give some advice to your younger self oh what would you say soften the grip I love it to the point let's play some games okay <laughs> oh um <laughs> <laughs> rowing skiing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um Getting dressed. Yeah. You're so good at this. I was going to say, where do they even live? They, they live in the ocean. A fish. Sleepwalking. Ghost. <laughs> a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sleepwalking. Yeah. <laughs> Tennis. Uh, oh. Badminton. Skip it, skip it. I don't know. I'm too broke. Um, no, a they, whale. Uh, a shark. No, um, uh, the opposite of false, true, and lies. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. There's also a singer with the same name. Uh, a share. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, something Bradshaw. Carrie. Yeah. That's Car it. Oh, yeah. Horror film. Argos without the S. Argos, you yeah. can't say that. Gosh, that was hard. What's Argo? Oh, a seal. Why did I say shit? Why did I, I can't I say make that share? noise.